Hello dear viewers and serious aspirants. It is a pleasure to have you back for set 54, multiple choice question and answer series of Serisk. Friends, with each set we are delving deeper into the world of risk and information system control. Friends, so let's jump right in and explore set 54 together. The first question states, which of the following type of risk is high for project that affect multiple business areas? The options are option A, control risk, option B, inherent risk, option C, compliance risk, and option D, residual risk. Friends, in this the correct answer is option B that is inherent risk because friends inherent risk is normally high due to the number of users and business areas that may be affected friends inherent risk is the risk level or exposure without taking into account the actions that management has taken or might take right Let's discuss the other options. Moving to the option A, that is control risk. Friends, this option is incorrect because control risk could be high, but it would be due to internal controls not being identified, evaluated or tested and would not be due to the number of users or business areas affected. Right? Moving to the option C, that is compliance risk. Friends, this option is also incorrect because compliance risk is the penalty applied to current and future earning for non conformance to laws and regulations and may not be impacted by the user, by the number of users and business areas affected. Moving to the option D, that is residual risk. Friends, this option is also incorrect because residual risk is the remaining risk after management has implemented a risk response and is not based on the number of users or business areas affected. Right? Moving next, that is question number 2. The question number 2 states, which of the following combination of factors help quantify the risk? The options are Option A, Probability and Consequences Option B, Impact and Threat Option C, Threat and Exposure And Option D, Sensitivity and Exposure Friends, in this the correct answer is Option a that is probability and consequences because friends the quantification of risk is based on the probability that is likelihood of a threat exploiting a vulnerability resulting in a consequences that is impact of damage to an asset right let's discuss the other options why they are incorrect Moving to the option B, that is impact and threat. Friends, this option is incorrect because a threat is anything, example object, substance, human, that is capable of acting against an asset in a manner that can result in harm. The impact is the effect of the threat on the asset. Friends, threat and impact are not sufficient to quantify the risk. Moving next, that is threat and exposure. This option is also incorrect because friends, threat is anything, example object, substance or human that is capable of acting against an asset in a manner that can result in harm, whereas exposure is the potential loss to an area due to the occurrence of an adverse event. Friends, 
threat and exposure are not sufficient to quantify the risk. Moving next, that is sensitivity and exposure. Friends, sensitivity is a measure of impact that improper disclosure of information may have on an enterprise. Whereas, exposure is the potential loss to an area due to the occurrence of an adverse event but is not used to quantify the risk. That's why the option A is correct. Moving next about the question number 3 which states which of the following requirement must be met during the initial stages of developing a risk management program. The options are Option A, management acceptance and support have been obtained. Option B, information security policies and standards are established. Option C, a management committee to provide program oversight exists. And Option D, the context and purpose of the program is defined. Friends. In this, the correct answer is option D, that is context and the purpose of the program is defined. Friends, in this question, option A and option D both are quite tempting. However, if you look at the keyword of the question, that is during the initial stage, right? Which means the management approval has already in place. Hence. The correct answer is D because initial requirement to determine the enterprise purpose for creating an information security risk management program include determining the desired outcome and defining objectives. Let's discuss the other options which are incorrect. Coming to the option A which states management acceptance and support have been obtained. This option is incorrect because although an important component in the development of any managed program, obtaining management acceptance and support ideally occurs well before the development of the program. Right? Moving next, that is option B, which states information security policies and standards are established. Friends, this option is also incorrect because information security policies and standards are based on the decisions made in the planning phase of the program and are developed based on the outcome and the business objectives established by the businesses. Moving to the option C, which states a management committee to provide program oversight exists. Friends, this option is also incorrect because management oversight of the risk management program is the monitoring control that is developed to ensure that the program meet business objectives. Friends, this process is established at the later stages of development after the purpose of the program and the mechanics of its deployment have been established. Right? That's why the option D is correct. Moving next, the next question states which of the following choices is the most important part of any outsourcing contract? The options are option A, the right to audit the outsourcing provider. Option B, provision to assess the compliance of the provider. Option C, procedures for dealing with incident notification. And Option D, requirement to encrypt hosted data. Friends, in this the correct answer is Option B, that is provision to assess the compliance of the provider. Because, friends, if the provision to monitor and hold a supplier accountable for security 
is not in the contract, then the outsourcing enterprise has no way to ensure compliance or proper handling of their data. Let's discuss the other options which are incorrect. Moving to the option A, which states the right to audit the outsourcing provider. Friends, this option is incorrect because the service provider may not allow the outsourcing company the ability to audit them directly, right? But may provide a proof of compliance conducted by an independent auditor. That's why this option is incorrect. Moving to the option C, which states procedure for dealing with the incident notification. Friends, the outsourcing contract will not usually contain details on procedures to follow when dealing with the incident. That's why this option is also incorrect. Moving next, which states requirement to encrypt hosted data. Friends, this option is also incorrect because there may not be a requirement to encrypt all data. Only sensitive data may require encryption. That's why this option is also incorrect. Friends, here we come to the end of set 54, multiple choice question and answer series for series. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more updates. Thank you.